The peace of Christ be with you. And also with you. Why well, I welcome all of you to our worship service this morning, especially our guests. I hope that you feel comfortable and meaningful uh, for your time here with us. Before we begin our worship, we have some announcements. First of all, uh, next Sunday is uh, October 16th, is our Laity Sunday. All of the United States of America, the United Methodist Church, we observe third Sunday in October as a Laity Sunday. The church is taking nominations for the lay leaders of the year. Uh, please email your nomination to Jody Kaiser or to the church office. Jody Kaiser is our lay leader. Raise up your hand so that people recognize you. Yes. And also, uh, we have uh, Feeding Love. If you are interest, interested in Feeding Love program, which is a Feed All, whoever uh, wants to come, our meeting will be on next, uh, this coming Saturday uh, at 10 o'clock at our church fellowship hall. And also, our first feeding program is on Saturday, October 29th, here, 11.30 to 1.30. So you can invite people. I think uh, it is a chicken salad with uh, apple cobbler. You cannot beat on that. Ooh. And with a croissant and some drinks. It's all free, and you are invited to come, and uh, you can build a fellowship with the other people. So please come and join us. And also, right after uh, worship service, our youth will meet right away at the fellowship hall today because of the schedule of the Pastor Kong this afternoon. Are there any announcements that you want to share with the others? Please turn the pay, uh, back of the church bulletin. Let us recite together our monthly Bible roles. Psalm 139, verse 13 through 14. For it was you who formed in my inward parts. You knit me together in your other womb. I praise you, for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Wonderful are your works that I know. Please remember, you are fearfully and wonderfully made. That's a great blessing that God has given us. Let us prepare our hearts and mind for worship.
Please stand and join me call to worship. From our busy world, with all its temptation, we gather to listen and renew our commitment. This is not a place of rest, but of refreshment. In this community of faith, we are challenged. God's steadfast love is before our eyes. Let us walk in faithfulness before our Creator. With Christ we are called to die, but also to live. With Christ we can endure, that we may also reign. God is faithful and ready to show mercy. God restores and heals. Let us give thanks. Sing aloud a song of thanksgiving. Let us say Our opening hymn is Lord of the Dance that is found on hymn, hymn number 261. As you know, the, this is a two-bit over two-bit, so we're going to sing dynamic with a joyful heart. Let us uh, sing together. Thanks be to God that we can dance with our Lord Jesus Christ. Not maybe physically, but spiritually with our emotional hearts as well, too. So let us confess our faith with the Apostles' Creed that is found on page 881, saying, I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, 
and in Jesus Christ is the only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under the Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead, he ascended into heaven, and to sit at the right hand of the God Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of the saints, the forgiveness of the sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. <laughs> Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, what you was in the beginning, is now and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. Please join me in the prayer of confession. There is more wickedness in us than we like to admit. We want what isn't ours. We are jealous of those who have more than us. We want to keep others in their places, lest they become more important. Sovereign God, have mercy on us. Let your spirit move in and through us, that we might be forgiven and become responsible, caring disciples of Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Our assurance of forgiveness. In Christ, God offers mercy, forgiveness, and healing, even when we are ungrateful. By faith we are made whole, that we might rise with Christ and serve with the faithful. Let us respond as people who know God's approval and seek to live up to it. Praise God, let us share the peace of Christ with one another. Now, join me once again for the prayer of illumination. Guide us, O God, by your word and Holy Spirit, that your life we may see light, in your truth find freedom, and in your will discover peace. Through Christ our Lord, amen. Our scripture lesson today comes from Luke chapter 17, verses 11 through 19. On the way to Jerusalem, Jesus was going through the region between Samaria and Galilee. As he entered a village, ten men with a skin disease approached him. Keeping their distance, they called out, saying, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. When he saw them, he said to them, Go and show yourselves to the priest. And as they went, they were made clean. Then one of them, when he saw that he was healed, turned back, praising God with a loud voice. He prostrated himself at Jesus' feet and thanked him. And he was a Samaritan. Then Jesus asked, Were not ten made clean? So where are the other nine? Did none of them return to give glory to God except this foreigner? Then he said to him, Get up and go on your way. Your faith has made you well. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks, Thanks be to God.
Good morning, children of God. Today's scripture. There were ten people who had a bad skin disease. We did not know how bad it was, but it was so bad that all of ten these people were isolated. And as Jesus passed by that town, they said, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. And Jesus healed them and made them clean. But one out of ten came back to Jesus, and on his way to Jesus, he says, Wow, I give glory to God. And when he came to Jesus, he knelt down before Jesus, and he said, Thank you. Thank you, Jesus. There are many things that we are thankful for. We can thankful for a beautiful this weather, good health, and loving parents, friends, tasty food, and the fragrant flowers, and even soap and hot water, beautiful seashell, the waves in the ocean, even we can give thanks to, the pl to playing pickleball, some of us. There are many things we can give thanks to God. Someone said, the more we give thanks to God, the more we are close to God. So when we go back home, you may think, what am I thankful for? What am I thankful for? As soon as we give thanks to God, God is right there in our hearts. Let us pray. Gracious God, we give you thanks for giving us the thankful hearts. Help us to have a spirit of receptivity of your word. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. A mother and her son were walking along the riverfront in one of our nation's largest cities when the youngster fell into the water. The currents quickly swept the boy beyond his mother's reach. A businessman at lunch in one of the nearby riverfront restaurant, hold her hysterical cries, and then he jumped into the water and he rescued the child. When the mother and her son were unite, reunited, she noticed that his baseball cap had come off while he was in the water. She spotted it many yards down river floating rapidly away. Without any hesitation, she pointed out to her son's rescuer that he had failed to retrieve the cap. Then she demanded that he go back into the water to get it, rather than giving thanks to the rescuer, rescuer for her son she requested him more. One Korean proverb says, one person was drowning and was rescued by someone. Instead of thanking his, his rescuer, the rescuer was asked for his baggage. Is there anything that exasperated and infuriates us more than ingratitude. Both the first story and the Korean proverb represent a mood that seemed to sweeping across our nation. Halloween comes a few weeks from now, and the children come to our door. Most children are grateful for the treats they receive. 
However, an alarming number wants each uh, one of each kind of candy in the basket. Have you seen those child? Yeah, they want, I want that, I want that. They move all the candies and I want that, I want that. Or another child says, I want to all, and he has a handful of candies. What I noticed from the trick or tree was that the greedy ones were the ungrateful ones. Those who took what they were given without whining and the complaint seemed genuinely sincere in their appreciation for the favors. If the spirit of thankfulness troubles us, we can understand why Jesus in today's scripture was concerned about the nine ungrateful lepers. Leprosy in the ancient time was the worst thing that could happen in a life. It was an incurable disease, a helpless and a hopeless disease as death. In fact, it was death, except that just a part of the diseases dies little by little every day. There was no simply simple way to treat it. Beyond the physical pain and the torment, Lepers could not even count on the comfort, sympathy, or compassion of their friends and family. Most leprosy is a highly contagious disease. So for the good of everyone concerned, those afflicted with it were forced to suffer the most extreme forms of isolation and ostracism from friends, family, and society. In today's gospel, 10 lepers lived in a city between Samaria and Galilee on the northern side of Israel. We do not know exactly that place, but it was far away from Jerusalem it was an undesirable place to live. There were clear distinctions between Jews and Samaritans religiously and genealogically. They do not talk to each other. However, once leprosy was found, Samaritans and Jews were treated equally. Sickness especially incurable disease, is beyond races, cultures, social status, ages, and gender. The general reaction to, of a people to a leper was a similar to the unfortunate, but common reaction to people with AIDS a few decades ago, and now COVID. According to religious law, especially Book of Leviticus chapter 13 and 14, lepers to wear torn garments. And they, when they saw people, they cover their lips with their hands, and they said, unclean, unclean, I am unclean. Maybe in other words, do not get close to me. It's contagious, maybe. In their pain and the agony, the ten lepers cried out to Jesus, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. And Jesus heard of them. So to be healed of a leprosy was to be healed of a terminal illness. Surely, all ten lepers realized that. All lepers needed to be healed. As Jesus told the ten lepers, Jesus want them to go back into the mainstream of life, saying, go 
and to show yourself to the priests without any hesitation and objections to the direction of Jesus Christ, they obeyed. Yes, all of them, they had a faith. They want to be cured. And all of them were healed instantly. How could they not be grateful and thankful to Jesus? Yet, only one returned to say, thank you, Jesus. He bowed down at the feet of Jesus. Here is a true worship. And here, indeed, a true faith. This leper went beyond the obedience of his comrades and manifested the joyful, reverent gratitude that characterized a fully formed faith. Fully formed faith brings a new freedom that gives one a relationship with God that goes beyond the dynamics of commandment and obedience. The experience of grace and mercy leads to the praise of God for a person of a mature faith. However, nine out of ten lepers did not come back to Jesus. Perhaps they are like us some ways. When we get the things we ask for, and we are satisfied, and many have no further need of Jesus. And we move on to the next stage of our lives. The ten lep nine lepers had an obedient faith in what Jesus commanded them to do. However, like most children who like the good gifts Rather than cherishing their relationship with the giver, the nine lepers' gratitude for Jesus was not expressed. Gratitude is a rare phenomenon. It is more than common courtesy, politeness, and or even good manners. Genuine, heartfelt gratitude is a spirit and it is an attitude. It is based on a deliberate decision to appreciate instead of biting back at it or being greedily preoccupied with it. Genuine gratitude is what overwhelms a person when he or she realizes that God is being too good to him or her. The question is this, With the, what can we compare leprosy today? The leprosy has the sickness, which has, the, has nerve damage, so they do not feel lots of pain, and they losing sensory loss, and they have a chronic pain. Do you have one of these? What are the pains of other diseases or occasions that we might have had? Some of us might, ha might have an incurable disease with the chronic pains, and we are struggling with that pain. Or some of us have a contracted COVID and still struggled with the aftermath while others might have undesirable bad memories from childhood or from a car accident, death, especially sudden death, or broken marriage, and saying, I cannot talk to him or her anymore, or divorce, financial challenges, panic attacks, addictions, or other heartbrokennesses. It's 
there. We, beyond the cultures and social status and races, ages, and gender, we all need Jesus. The desperate, the hopelessness, the, the, the helplessness, and the isolated, like the ten lepers, request Jesus. Jesus, Master, have mercy on me. Mercy on me. All of our diseases and the brokenness have driven us to call out Jesus Christ for mercy. The question is, when was your last time that you ask, Lord Jesus, have mercy on me? Every day, early in the morning, sitting on the pew behind Alan, or walking around the neighborhood, or while I'm driving, or even, even in the swimming pool at YMCA, as I move my hands straw, and I pray to God, Lord, have mercy on me. Lord, have mercy on me. And I need your mercy. Oh, Lord, have mercy on me. Repeated it over and over again. That's my, one of my prayer life. And then when I felt God's mercy, and I said, thank you, thank you. Have you ever cried in the water? That's something wonderful thing that you may experience while you are swimming. What about if you have not had done, what about you try this? Whenever you are stressed out, when you have problems, when you feel like you have a leprosy in you, chronic pain, isolation, loneliness, you may say, Lord, have a mercy on me. Lord, have a mercy on me. And you can repeat it over and over. It is a magic, and you feel it. His presence, his mercy, and his grace. It may change you too. The ten lepers were healed. But only one got well enough to truly enjoy the Lord's blessing. He was the only one to turn back in humble thanksgiving and praise. Perhaps the single most surprising thing about the story is that the one who went, went back was the one no one would have expected to go back. He was a Samaritan. The rest were Jews. Nine Jews, one Samaritan. Perhaps that explained his gratitude. The Samaritan man had less to trust in. He had less to rely on. He had less to be proud of who he was and what he was than the other nine, who probably felt that we deserved all this healing because we are chosen people of God. Hmm. But not that guy. They s might think that they certainly had not deserved the kind of sickness that they had. Why did I have this kind of sickness? I'm a Jew. I'm a God's chosen person. You know what? That may cause them to complain. Why me? They did not turn back even to say a simple word of gratitude, which indicated how sick they remained. Their ingratitude was a spiritual sickness that was severe than their 
leprosy. They might believe that to be proven by the priest was more important than the expression of thanks to Jesus. They might justify themselves as saying, you know what? Jesus commanded, commands us to go to show ourselves the priest. So we keep what he says. Or we keep the law of Moses. We do not and we are not turning back to Jesus. No thanks for going back to Jesus. The word thanks may be the most valuable word in any language. So I am testing your knowledge. What is the word thanks word for Spanish? Oh, you are very good. All right. What is it for French? Mercy. What is for German? Danke. What is it for the deep southern accent? Thanks. <laughs> All right. My wife, Kunyu, will help me. What is the thanks for Korean? So you are learning Korean today, all right? <laughs> Please repeat after me. 고맙습니다. <laughs> Traveler in foreign countries should know at least three phrases in the native tongue of those countries. Ah, one, thank you. Number two, I'm sorry. Three, well, is a bathroom. See, all the saints of church history had a profound spiritual connectedness to God. The commonality of all these saints, saints is this. They always gave thanks to God beyond their situations and the circumstances. For example, Apostle Paul or those who read King James Version, you say, Saint Paul. All right? He expressed, expressed his thankfulness in every letter of his, 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 uh, uh, to his readers. He says, I give thanks to God for your faith. I give thanks to God for your overflowing love. I give thanks to God for your financial aid. I give thanks to God that you are my partner or co-worker in the mission and ministry of Jesus Christ. When you read his letters, you can find always thanks, thanks. What it tells us is the more we are close to God, the more we are thankful to God. The more we are spiritually mature, the more we thank God. Let me flip what I said. If we are not close to God, we complain. If we are spiritually immature, we judge others, even we condemn other people. When Mark Twain was at the peak of his career, his writing was valued at $5 per word. Some prankster wrote Twain a letter stating, quote, Dear Mr. Twain, enclosed is a $5. Please, Send me your best word, unquote. Shortly, a reply came. It read simply, thanks. We believe that God is a God of omnipresence. But someone once said, 
that God has a two dwelling places. One, God is in heaven. And the other is in the thankful hearts of a people. As the season of thanksgiving approaches, we remember what the Bible say, tells us about heartfelt gratitude. Give thanks in all circumstances. This is the will of God in Jesus Christ for you. The psalmist expressed, Bless the O my soul. Do not forget all his benefit. The best thanks we can give God is to try to deserve God's goodness, faithfulness, and his mercy. It is my prayer that we give thanks to God in all circumstances. So I suggest that let us, have, let us take a moment and think about what we are thankful for. Glory be to the Father, to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us pray. O oh God, with our sinful nature, sometimes we complain, we judge, and even sometimes we condemn others. O oh God, grant us your grace and your mercy that we may be thankful for all things in us, around us, and uh, through us. In the name of Jesus Christ we pray. Amen. Uh, while uh, we have an offering in your church insert, there is a one sheet in your uh, offering uh, in your church bulletin, the question is, what would you like to see happening at this church for the next three to five years? So we have received some of the uh, the some from some of you, and I need your help. So either you can fill that form in, number one, or you can give thanks to God in your heart. That's your offering too. Or you can offer your financial support for the mission and ministry of Jesus Christ. So it can be, it can be your offering today. One, your uh, vision for the church. Two, your thankful heart. Three, your offerings. So let us offer ourselves and our offerings to God.
God, we praise you with our offerings, with our time and efforts devoted to your purpose. By your mercy, you have been healed, and uh, your love we are blessed day by day. In Christ, we have been introduced to life in its fullness. O oh God, grant us to enjoy simple things as Jesus did, and to live with others in mutual caring, respect, and thankfulness. We would live and endure with Jesus Christ until you come into our lives. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. You may be seated. As we continue to worship our living and loving God, we have some prayer concerns and the celebration. Well, first of all, we had a Civitan Pancake Supper, uh, which was held on Thursday, uh, was very successful. I met many of you there, and thank you for the service of Civitans and those who support the pancake dinner. Uh, please remember Otto Poplin's uh, sister-in-law, Peggy Haywood, passed away, and also other people who lost loved ones, Charles Taylor's family, uh, Ina Saflit, Roger Sue Barletlet, and Nathan Kaiser, who lost a uh, friend. And also we uh, praise God for healing power on Kyle Saban, and also remember the victims of the hurricane. Uh, remember those people in your prayers as well. Remember Bobby Lincoln, J.J. Russell, Johnny uh, Mabry, Laura Johnson, and also our previous pastor, Jim Harris. And continue to remember uh, people in the nursing homes and the homebound people. And we have uh, some celebration uh, uh, among us that who has the birthdays and uh, uh, also anniversary. To begin with, we have uh, uh, Otto Poplin, his birthday uh, is tomorrow. Betty Oliver, your birthday is coming? Yes, we're glad to celebrate your birthday. And Beth Lancaster, and anniversary, Billy and Kay Martin. Kay, how many years have you been put up with uh, Brother Billy? 52. 52. Wow. <laughs> yes, thanks. Thank you for both of your faithfulness and the sincerity to hold your marriage <coughs> that long. So we are going to sing happy birthday and happy anniversary. Are there any celebration or prayer concerns that you might have to share with others? Yes, share with us, please. 
Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you for sharing. Absolutely, our prayers are with the family. And also, please uh, share the love of Christ with uh, that family. It is the best opportunity that God has given to us that we can share God's love with them. Please do that. This is a great opportunity. Thank you for sharing. Let us pray. Gracious God, Give up all good gifts in whom are the springs of our lives. We praise you for your loving kindness and tender mercy. We thank you for your hand upon us in sickness and in health, for the comfort of our family and friends for the joy of a home and a country, for every precious gift of your providence. We thank you for every messenger of your love whom you have granted to us, and especially for him who from the height of heaven stooped to enter into our low state. We bless you, O oh God, that our darkness has been illuminated by the gracious words of Christ, that our burdens have been lightened by his tender sympathy, and that by his holy influence, our feet, we have been guided into the right path. Above all, we thank you that through the sacrifice of himself upon the cross and his victory over the grave, our Lord has redeemed us from sin and death and made us partakers of eternal and abundant life. We pray all this in the name of Jesus Christ, who taught his disciples how to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us the and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Today we talk about give thanks to God beyond our situations and circumstances. It's not easy, but when we look, look upon our Lord Jesus Christ, there's always something beautiful in the windstorm. Even though we may not enjoy there, still God is there with us. There's a something beautiful. So our clothing him is a something beautiful. Please stand and join me something beautiful and we are going to sing twice. <laughs>
my beloved sisters and brothers, remember, God has been the actor in the drama of our lives. So go out to touch and heal in gratitude for what has been done for you. May the blessing of God surround you. May the strength of God uphold you. May the voice of God speak in and through you. May the will of God be accomplished among you so that you can be always be thankful. In the name of the Father, of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, the people of God say, Amen. Amen.